All right, tweets have been sent out, and we are live for Future Foundation episode 38. And we're going to start right here, right now. I don't know if anyone's here, but still, nonetheless, we're going to start right here with the first matchup of the night for Future Foundation. Hello, hello. Lara Parker making her way to the ring. And going head to head tonight with the champion, the T, the TV champion. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring from Sydney, Australia, the superstar. Of course, Amara Parker was one of the runner-up contenders for the television championship. As we went into Crossfire to crown a champion. Of course, defeating the TV champion Holly Lance tonight could secure a spot for the title. Of course, the champion does not have a contender officially yet. So this could be the match that just solidifies that position for Amara Parker. However, still waiting in the wings there is uh, another former challenger with... Vanessa Virus, who definitely wants to get a shot at the championship once again. And there's the champ, Florida, Holly Lance. The television champion, the all American sweetness, Holly Lance. Holly Lance took the championship. She's been on a roll since debuting. She debuted quite a few episodes back, but still, nonetheless, she's been on a roll. She's pretty, uh, she's got a pretty good win-loss record and stays mostly positive with her wins, sitting currently with seven and three. she won the miniature tournament to get the championship opportunity which she took glad to see uh, this championship has currently at least a champion who can be taken seriously in a way that she's currently presenting herself. Because right now, Mara blocks that chop. Holly Lance, like I was saying, taking her taking the championship seriously, being the first of this variation of the championship. And she's, like I said, been very consistent with her wins and losses. Seven and three. And in most of those wins, she has won with that Star Spangled Moonsault. And if not the Star Spangled Moonsault, she has used a variety of submissions or that Impaler DDT to get the job done. But for the most part, she uses that Star Spangled Moonsault to a great effect. However, Amara with the leg takedown there with the Dragon Screw. And going straight for the arm. Could be trying to weaken that arm to block the submission. And like I was saying, submissions are a game plan nowadays. The submissions being reactivated into, well, not reactivated, but reincorporated into the matches. It makes it more of a game plan when you want to 
just decide what kind of matchup you think you could win with. And you're, both sides of the match are putting together what they believe is the perfect opportunity, the perfect layout for a win. Right now, Amara getting the perfect suplex there and the German suplex picture perfect with now the ripcord into a vertical suplex dropping Holly Lance down on the mat and Holly gets out of the way of the stop charges in but stops just ahead of the attack just to send Amara into the corner okay. Holly drop kick to the lower back of Amara but Amara with a boot to the stomach there the leg you can see the damage already being done there to that left leg is now Lance up on the shoulders in the fireman carry be dropped with the snake eyes in the buckle of course guys uh, tonight there's a lot of action on display of course we have Kamaya Khan versus Rachel Holloway I believe up next and in our main event the uh, third match of the trios tournament as we uh, are Getting close to the end of the first round. Of, of course, next episode of Legacy will be the last of the first round. And that matchup will be the clergy versus the scumbags. However, uh, let's focus more on this matchup here as Amara back in the ring. Allowing the champion to get that distance and get back in the ring for the moment. But Amara with a big forearm strike. Oh, and a kick to the face on the way down. Follows with a neck breaker. Parker with the fisherman brain buster. I see this as Amara trying to prove herself, trying to just get more evidence out there that she deserves a championship, but she's deserving the floor at the moment, apparently. Oh, wait a minute, Holly. Oh, she backed up like she was going to do something, and I got really concerned for the well being of both competitors there. That springboard, but gets caught with a German suplex high on the neck. Amara Parker has challenged for all three singles championships and has come up short all three times, unfortunately, for her. And it's moments like these where you get to face the champion that you get to uh, really just show what you, what kind of skill you have and show that you deserve an opportunity but that boot to the face there by Lance is not trying to let let herself be made example of drop down behind and the scorpion death drop by Parker cover there could that be it one two only a two count off that scorpion death drop Sweeps the leg, and oh, look at that leg drop. Cover, one, two, no. Hello. Oh, this is that, that whatever the fuck. Oh, blocks the punch, but gets caught with a grapple for the Rana takedown. Now Holly using her head to get that next offensive mover, but Amara also using her head. Gets caught with the boot, though. Well, at the boot. Follows with a snap suplex to Parker. Oh, went for that impaler, I think, but the legs badly damaged here as Parker now butterfly suplex in the release center across the ring. section but the elbow to the knee again you see a second snap suplex by Lance really trying to soften up the challenger and the impaler DDT Lance trying to get her away from the ropes for the pin here we've seen rope breaks both be an effective way to get out of a pin wait a minute oh wait a minute she's going for that submission instead the face plant and watch as she captures 
the legs and the arms there and just wrenches on the shoulders. A very awkward position to be trapped in as Amara Parker needs to get out of the hold and she wants to stay in this matchup. She said no and Lance frust out of frustration releases but going for the cover. One, two, no. Look at Holly Lance. Very uh, methodical here. The pacing of this match for her at the moment. She's going with slower strikes and not nearly as high risk as usual. But the suplex there by Parker as she goes behind for the back suplex. Lance are down. Comes around. Waist locks. And the poison Rana spiking her on her head. Parker. Oh, just boots to the side of the head here. Follows with the senton. And the smash of the arm. Of course, Parker done a lot has done a lot of damage to the arms and legs in this matchup to Holly Lance. I think at this point Amara might have a uh, an almost evenly distributed amount of damage to the body, but maybe a little more to the legs at this point. Holly, okay, tried for that springboard finally, but got caught and a drop kick to the shoulders there. Damn near the neck. It's now the jawbreaker by Lance. And going for, I think, a, maybe a Spanish fly or a Yurinagi. But gets caught, and now Holly back in it with a punch to the face. And Oh, come on! Referee, the referee needs to get in there. Clearly, Holly is taking great advantage of referee's discretion as she was choking Amara on that top rope. And Amara tries for a kick and gets caught once again. I think a third or fourth suplex with a float over this time. One. Ooh. Oh, Star Spangled Moonsault. That could be what we're seeing here. No, the, the frog splash. I don't think we've seen her do that before. Jets are on the ropes. Oh, an elbow to the face. Lance back to the top. Could be another frog splash or the moonsault. Star Spangled moonsault. Nobody home. Parker lifts up the champ. Oh, the code breaker. One. That seemed like a last ditch effort from, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Just narrowly avoided that sweep of the leg. There's the back elbow. Cover. One, two, no. Lance just narrowly avoided the leg sweep that would have led up to possibly a very Bad move in the repertoire of Amara Parker for the champion. The knee to the face and lifts her back up. Possibly looking to do something big here. No, the back elbow to the face. Holly springs to the middle. And the, oh, drop kick caught. Cover. One, two. Ooh. Lance charges in, the arm drag takedown once again. Follows up for another snap suplex. Holly, 
Not a good idea. <laughs> Just springboarded for no reason whatsoever. But I guess he got a point across for that singular strike to the face. Now Holly Lance sent over the ropes and onto the apron by Parker, who's coming to the outside with her. For the suplex on the apron. That's the hardest part of the ring. Jeez. Holly Lance still somehow in this match. And we can't see what's happening. I'm assuming it's too graphic to show. Oh no, no, a suplex on the floor this time. It's a very, very thin layer of padding on the outside. That's got to be a very painful experience for the challenger here. The hardest part of the ring is the apron besides the post, but that's the thing. The, the apron is one of the hardest part of the rings because it's the exact point where every piece of metal connects. One, two, and a, only a two count. That ring apron is the spot where all the beams cross the ends of the boards are stored and everything in that matter as we see the submission this time. Parker facing the camera. The referee not facing the submission, though, as it's over for Amara Parker. Holly Lance on a dominant, dominant streak. That leg drop is what I was uh, forgetting the move turned into earlier, but the impaler here by Holly Lance, and we see that leg sweep right there got blocked, and we don't see what's going on here because it seems like someone had their hand over the camera. Might have been cleaning the lens. Almost was over right here with that drop kick reversal. As we see one, two, and almost Here's a three. Winner, but Holly Lance won off a submission. Sweetness. Holly Lance. We move on from this match to our next matchup on the card. Kamaya Khan versus Rachel Holloway. I don't know why she doesn't already have that, but I said it because I'm pretty sure she's supposed to have it. Here we go, Kamaya Khan makes her way to the ring. Currently one and two. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, Kaiva Ken.
And here comes rank number three, Rachel Holloway. And from oh my Seattle, God, I think she just took it out camera, man. Holloway, former tag champion, looking to return to a former glory. However, uh, she'll have a chance to do so tonight if she's able to win in this matchup. In the scenario she wins this matchup, she could tie with Madison and Vanessa for the television well, for the television championship number one ranked spot. Rachel starts off with that face buster on the knee. Turns her around, goes for the waist lock and the tiger suplex. Drops the elbow as well. Uh, with the flipping sent on, but I believe most of the impact was on the face of Rachel Holloway there. Uh, from the top, the missile drop kick to the face. Oh, and a, a claw slam. I don't know what to call it besides that. And again, that sent on almost completely on the head. Mike Khan might have Rachel Holloway's number here. Goes out of the way, charges in for the head scissors. Going around the world to take her down into the corner. Blocks a strike. Buckets, oh, oh, forearms by Kamaya. Sends her into the corner across the ring. Blocks that final chop there. But a knee caught and she's back in the corner and she's getting the chops once again. And now a boot to the face. Jawbreaker and boot to the well, boot to the gut and the X Factor. Of course, Kamaya Khan getting her first win in VPW on the last episode of Future Foundation over the cousin of Rachel Holloway, which that was Alex Holloway, making a brief return from her excursion to Joshi Star Wrestling. As the slam on the floor, Jesus. Blocks that elbow, grabs Kamaya Khan for another face buster on the floor. And at the moment, it seems like Kamaya Khan is dealing with the X Factor. She's sent back in the ring, and apparently Rachel did not like that joke. Oh, the DDT. But Kamai Khan straight back up after getting hit with a DDT and their code breaker this time. And Rachel's going to have to do a lot more damage to keep the challenger down. Ow. Hurt my knee. Ow. All the way to the suplex brings her into the corner. And now again dropping the opponent down with that shoulder breaker and now going to the armbar 
maximize the damage you could do within one transition. And now Holloway with the stuff of power bomb and a rope break. Lifts up Khan Holloway. Diamond cutter. One, two, no. A little early for a, a finish and a pin attempt there. Rachel needed a gut and another, and tried for a third, but gets caught with a kick to the inner leg there. Repeated strikes by Khan, and now the grapple, but no. Rachel able to break out of the hold there. Go for the knee once again. It's not going to work at this stage in the match, but a different knee to the gut, and now it works. Bryant falls onto the ropes, but catches that elbow to the face. The knee shunt to the gut, and now a German suplex. Again, heavy strikes to the face is now Rachel in the corner. What is this? Springboard and Zagiri. Rykon completely in the driver's seat at this point in the match. She's up on top rope for the moonsault. One, two, no. Oh, he be out of it at the DDT. One, two, three, no. And I think I said Holly, but I meant Holloway, and I'm just kind of focused and zoning in, but the backdrop driver driving the head of Kamai Khan into the mat. Oh, and now Holloway. Cattle mutilation locked in. Oh, she tapped. Two in a row for submission wins. And Holly Lance laughing and pointing at Kamai Khan after that submission. Diamond cutter there. I don't know if we're going to be able to see the submission. There's the DDT. Here it is. The cattle mutilation perfectly places herself between Kamaya Khan and the ropes. So it was almost impossible to maneuver. Kamaya Khan forced to tap. I don't see her hands legitimately Here's tapping, but it could have been a verbal Rachel submission. Holland. Next up, we have Jacob Wells versus Chase Hawkins. Chase Hawkins is going to be flanked by his uh, tag partner, Georgie Mack, whereas Jacob Wells, all alone. Ah, fuck it. I'll just, I'll give Jacob Wells his managers here. I want to see their, I want to see their entrance together. I know that's not how it was booked, but I really want to see their, I want everyone to see their entrances all together. Oh, went too far. Oh, almost forgot. Come on, Jacob, remember things, please. And to be fair, I 
Like I said, I'll be fair about it. If, he, if I get two managers, he'll get two managers. This is, the, this is the match we'll see on Legacy. So it's only fair that we see them all together just before. The night before. Because I'm going to, as soon as this show's over, I'm going to go on my computer and I'm going to make the Legacy card images. And I'm going to upload it immediately. All right, the clergy making their way to the ring here. Jacob Wells getting his his matchup here against Chase Hawkins of Du Bois, or I guess at, at this point they are the scumbags. The contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Columbus, Ohio, weighing in at 251 pounds. The United States Champion. Jacob Wells. It seems to me every time we see these guys, they get a little more absurd. But it still seems as if Hunter and CB are the most normal of the group right now. <laughs> An interesting uh, group of people here. Hello, Hunter. Oh yeah, you got you got some emotes you can use because you were gifted a sub. You uh, you got a little VPW badge next to your name. Plus, you have uh, access to the VPW emote, the Future Foundation emote, and the Legacy emote. And I might soon add the Uprising emote. I don't know yet. Hunter, it was either you go over the rope or CB's short ass goes under the over the rope, so you know. And you're all we're all relatively the same height, so I don't know why I said short ass. Anyways, here come the scumbags and, and his opponent. I forgot to give Charles them a trio's Stanley, entrance, West but Virginia, weighing in yeah. at 241 pounds, Chase Hawkins. Chase Hawkins, the man in the match here, but Adrian Black. Tailing behind a little bit because he does not want to be a part of this. But he's here nonetheless. He uh, has stated numerous times he didn't want anything to do with this trios tournament. He didn't want to be a part of it, but he was volunteered for the tournament. And uh, in his own words, he doesn't really want to win the tournament, but he'd rather not fucking lose. Well, getting that first strike in on Hawkins as he sends him into the corner. Swings the legs out of Chase. Brings him down for a neck breaker. On the cross face strikes to the head. I guess. I 
I just let it happen because it's not a swear to me. I think it's I think it's more of an insult. So they're like, oh well, this isn't this isn't okay. But I I allowed it. Let's try to stop once again on the hand, but he got caught, and now Abutu got sends him to the apron. So am I. It's just too bad that Adrian Black is a slight, slightly different variation of the color pink for his his uh, colors there. Oh, wait a minute. Georgie Mack charging across the ring here, and so is Adrian. We got a standoff on the outside between the opposing teams on the, on, on the management side. As well as bringing Chase Hawkins back in the ring to split up the teams once again. Of course... Yeah, of course, uh, like I said, this matchup will be on Legacy tomorrow night in the main event, the final round, well, the final first round matchup, as uh, we're going to see so far, we're going to see All Arkham Rejects versus Gentlemen's Club in round two, and of course, the main event tonight versus the winner of the main event tomorrow night which could very well be Exiled versus Clergy for the first time ever, or, or in a six-man capacity at least. Or it could be Clergy versus Ray, Mamba, and Blade again. Or it could be the Scumbags. They have every bit of chance too, but the cravat neckbreaker on Hawkins there. I'm just excited about the aspects, the consequences of the actions going prior to this matchup, which... To be honest, every single team in this tournament has some sort of history with another. And if it's not the full team, in the like in the Scumbags case, Adrian Black has history with just about every single person in this tournament because of him being, at one point, a very dominant television champion, intercontinental champion, and world champion. And briefly, hardcore champion, which, by the way, he beat Mamba for that hardcore championship. Or Mamba beat him for the championship, sorry. Mamba debuted and beat him in a steel cage. So Adrian Black, like I said, has history with basically everyone in said tournament. And of course, not to mention the, the fucking star-studded team in the main event. The star-studded team in the main event on one side with the exile having Roy Pierce a multiple time world champion a multiple time intercontinental champion and then you have Justice Stone multiple time world champion one time intercontinental champion Brandon Alexander multiple multiple time well also yeah Justice Stone a multiple time tag champ Brandon Alexander multiple time world champ multiple time tag champ that is an absolutely star studded team with championship gold history like you can't believe. And now the leg sweep by Wells though on Hawkins as Hawkins was starting to get some momentum build up here. Wells, European uppercuts him down, going outside the ring and to the top rope. And he's going, he's thinking froggy. Oh my God, oh my God. The frog splash on the, on the kneeling Chase Hawkins, one on the rope break. Holy shit! Rainmaker! One, two, no! Clergy, like I was just brought to my attention, of course. Clergy has the most gold in VPW currently. Hunter Quinn has the one half of the tag titles and the Hardcore Championship. Of course, Christian Blake has the other half of the tag titles. Wells, U.S. Champion, and Amber Reed, Pure Champion over on Legacy. And this is the, the moment. In, oh, another submission victory could be underway. No, a rope break. He got blocks his, or dodges as now the boot of the gut hits. But Wells caught him with the Dreamweaver. Oh, but the boot caught this time in the dragon screw leg whip. Off the ropes. 
Leg drop number one. He's going to go for a second one here. And he hits it. Kick to the inner thigh there as now Wells grapples a hold of him, sends him over the rope. Nope, oh, nope, sends him at the ropes, but not over. Now a return of favor sends him into the corner. Chase Hawkins turns him around. Oh, throwing to the lower back there. Oh, again. And again, Wells gets caught. Oh, face first into the buckle, but a boot to the gut there. Wells now snap suplexes him. After that combo of strikes, he snap suplexes. Now brings his hand back down to the mat to repeatedly stomp on the fingers once again. Lifts him up. Oh, boot to the gut by Hawkins, though. Oh, the, oh, and again, just the strikes and the rolling elbow. Oh, but speaking of rolling, he rolls out of the way of that kick, but gets caught with a boot. Blocks that strike. Gets caught on the grapple. Hawkins, leg sweep, goes around, gets to the head position, and drops the knee on the back of the head. And one to the face as well. Chase Hawkins now gets caught with the grapple, and we're going to see some backbreakers on the knee. Wells recovered quickly from those knee strikes to the head. Oh, and a kick to the face. Stop. Oh my, what the f <laughs> That was the most powerful stop I've ever seen the zigzag. <laughs> One, two. Chase Hawkins to the top, the leg drop. <laughs> Cover. One, two, no. Jesus Christ. Hawkins goes for the boot, gets caught. Forearm to the face, boot to the gut. Springboard's up and hits the forearm again. Oh, leg, will boot to the face there by Wells. Gets caught though on the grapple, leg sweeps him down again. Wells, double leg takedown, picks him up. Oh, the rolling elbow as he plants him down hard. He's going for that frog splash a second time. Will he hit it? Yes, he does. Cover now. One, two, no. Wells used to use that frog splash as a finishing maneuver, but now it's not enough. He's got to hit that Rainmaker. Or a, the red right hand as he started calling it recently. One, two, three. No! Going for that submission, but Chase able to break the grasp of Jacob Wells there. Lifts him up, but no, Wells goes behind. Scorpion death drop again. Or well, not again, but for the first time in this match, but we've seen it a lot. Wells frustrated, just look at this, punching the eyebrow. Big senton. This is a, the frustration of a man who believes he should have won by now. He just dri drove the head in the mat multiple times and goes for the cover. Wasn't enough there either. Wells gets caught with that forearm smash to the face, lifts him back up. Kick to the, gut, kick to the leg, catches for the, the collar and elbow, and then bringing him to the ropes here. What is he thinking? Oh, the stun gun! To the top for the leg drop again. No, he's going for something else this time. And he missed it. Okay. Sends him into the corner. Half edge chop. Wells now with a brain buster. Oh, now he's going back to those strikes to the face there. 
Jesus. But Chase still in this one. We've seen the fight in this man. The, a guy who's gone through so much in his career, so many injuries, so many missteps. Driven for success, but Wells catches the boot this time in Dragon Screw. I talked about the championship accolades of the clergy. Well, let's talk about Du Bois, their former tag champs in their own right. They've been fighting their way to the top of the division, but Wells with that armbar once again locked in. He's just got to reach forward. Oh, my. He just barely, just barely got out of that one. I think it was just on the verge of a submission when Chase just barely touched the ropes there to break the hold. And a forearm by Hawkins. Oh, boot to the face. Wells gets caught up on the shoulders. Fireman carry. The stun gun again. Oh, but he caught the boot. He caught the boot. DDT. Chase tried to combo a, a stun gun into a grapple. Wells blocked it, hit a DDT, and now he gets caught with a back suplex, though. Lifts him up. He could be trying to finish this one off. Boot to the gut. The Rose plant face first into the back. Wells could be out. One, two, no. Ah, shaky. The zigzag again. This would be it. It could be over as soon as he hits this maneuver. Planted down hard as he goes for the cover. One, two, no. Are you serious? Uh-oh, this is it. He's going for the submission. It's over. He's got the submission locked in. It's over. This is the last ditch effort. The last ditch effort. He's got to get this submission win here. No, Wells. Oh, my. He gets out of it with a, a knee to the head. Oh, the spine buster. And Wells is looking for it. Red right hand for a third time. Now the elbow. He got the elbow to the face. Oh, wait a minute. Wells taking out the knee, though. Oh, positions for the German suplex off of the mat to the top once again. And the frog splash lands on the sternum. Cover on Hawkins. One, two, three. What a matchup between two incredible talents. Jacob Wells nearly lost this matchup out of the frustration he was starting to show. He showed signs of weakness, but Chase Hawkins tried for that submission, and that cost him. And from, from an obvious standpoint, he went for a submission that he was not used to. Wells, already doing that submission earlier in the match, reversed out of it, hit him with that knee strike, and it was all Wells at that point. And there's the frog splash that ended it all for Chase Hawkins here tonight. Here is your winner, Jacob. And there's the clergy standing tall after the match is over. Jacob Wells, the first man of the clergy to get an actual win in a decent amount of time at this point. However, we still got two more matches on the card, but next up, the number one contender for the X Division Championship facing our current world champion.
Here we go. Hunter makes his way to the ring, and like the I said, he is going for the X Division Championship at Loomis. He's got that opportunity. From New Orleans, Louisiana, weighing in at 215 pounds, Hunter. Hunter, one half of the tag champs when Gentlemen's Club had the titles. He's a former hardcore champion as well, one of the more dominant hardcore champs we've had. Only dethroned finally by Trevor Hannibal at Crossfire. But tonight he's got to face the world champion, probably his biggest challenge to... Uh, Prove for himself, not so much his biggest challenge in the sense of uh, a matchup because it seems that Alaric, not necessarily the most challenging opponent here in BPW. Though he's not necessarily the most challenging of opponents, he's making his way to the ring nonetheless. In at 219 pounds, the world champion, Eric. Yeah, I don't know, Hunter. Maybe, maybe he will. Probably Hunter will win, but we don't know that yet. Alaric, not at all a good win-loss record. I will not lie about the win-loss records and how they have affected the presentation of the competitors on BPW because that is that's just how this is. You want to be a successful opponent. You want to be a successful competitor. He has four and five in singles competition. That does not include tag or multi-man matches that he has lost. But here we go, looking at the opponent across the ring, Hunter. He gets that kick starting off the matchup, goes and he's got multiple strikes here to the body, so it almost begs the question if he's going to focus on the body of the champion. He's going for the back, and now Springboard Moonsault, again, the targeting on the body. But of course, with his finishers being a uh, so heavily neck related you might want to do some damage to the neck as well of course that omega driver plus the ataxia the ddt to the champion as he goes for the cover here one only a one count oh dodges will block that clothesline goes behind ripcord form to the face Now to the top rope. Diving. Oh, wait a minute. Caught him. Diamond cutter. Alaric just caught him from mid air with a diamond cutter. Now the wasteland. Big boy senton combo. The forearm to the face knocks him down and goes to the ropes. Oh, and a boot to the side of the head. And now locking in an inverted figure four on Hunter. I almost wonder if that knee brace being slightly driven into the other leg, the extended leg, if that has any effect on the hold, but sending him over the ropes and to the floor kind of going into his own territory here. He likes the hardcore aspect of Whoa. wrestling, especially after winning that hardcore championship. He's really implored it a little more. 
in his matches now. Catches him as he gets back in the ring, but he gets caught with a boot to the gut. Speaking of boots to gut, one of his own. And now the oh brain buster on the knee. Now the the difference in a regular brain buster and a brain buster on the knee is that sudden shift, that sudden stop onto the knee. It affects you mentally, so you're not prepared for the impact of it. That's the difference with a regular brain buster and a brain buster on the knee. It's because of that, that sudden impact on the knee, it throws your system off and you can't prepare properly for that attack. Speaking of attacks, a knee drop to the face. What about a boot to the face there? Chris Locke in reverse into an STO there. Of course, our ringside correspondents on hand for tonight's action is Alert with the neck breaker. Oh my God, right into the post. Did you hear the sound his skull made on the post? Five. Hunter getting back in the ring and he's clearly disoriented, even at the wrong direction. Alaric in the driver's seat, he hit that strike and now just repeated knees to the chest. Using that knee brace. And I'm starting to think he might not even have a real injury. However, another knee drop, this time reversed. He didn't have one before, he's definitely got one now. On a power bomb. To the top. But he's looking for it again. We've seen how poorly this has gone for him before. And he hits it this time, the Rana from the top. Or off the top. Oh, but he, turned, he went for a turnaround for that. Omega driver gets caught. Clothesline down. Allard with another one. And the third emphatic clothesline is now looking to take out the shin in the DDT combo. He hits the shin. DDTs him down. He's not done yet. Oh, the knee brace to the, to the rib cage. One, two, no. Oh, Alaric gets tripped up there. Ripcord, full arm strike to the face once again. Hunter still trying everything he can. He's trying to stay in this matchup, but I think he's got some pretty bad damage done to him after that knee to the, to the torso there. Now Alaric looking for the pile driver. No. Hunter reverses. Charges in. GT. Lifts up Alaric, but Alaric with a fireman carry takeover. Alaric, similarly to Aaron, he has a big task ahead of him at the pay-per-view. Alaric has Aaron Miller for the World Championship to look forward to. All the right hand. Aaron Miller recently got a win over Jacob Wells on Future Foundation, and now the buckle smashes from the full Nelson on Hunter. Oh, dodges the roundhouse. And the clotheslines just keep coming here. I think he's up to six. Oh, but a lift of the boot to the face. Now top out by Hunter. Hunter for the attacks here. No catches. Oh, my God. Oh, the... the the knee brace to the face as it goes to the top rope. Alert from the top cross body. I think he's going for blood here. Sets him on the shoulders. 
snake with a stun on the ropes, or the gun stun, whatever you want to call it. The stun gun, gun stun, whatever the fuck. Oh, dropping the knee on the leg towards the, the shin bone there as he takes down out temporarily. Oh, fades a, fades a chop into a DDT there. Oh, the spear! Oh, he's got it. The attacks, yeah, but he could be too close to the ropes for the pin. He is ever slightly too close to the ropes, causing that immediate rope break. That could have been it, in my opinion. The springboard leg drop and rest in pieces tailbone right there. Cover, <laughs> cover. One, of course, only a one count. Didn't expect much there. Hunter off the ropes, misses that needed to the head there. Goes for, I think, another one of those cradle pile drivers. Hunter reverses, and now the lariat. On the figure four, once again locked in, but a rope break this time. Sweet shin music, DDT. And now the cradle pile driver by Alec on the way. Cradle pile driver. The champion might be finally getting a win here against the X Division number one contender, Hunter. One, two, no, Hunter's still in this. And Alec completely frustrated using that knee brace to try to damage the arm. Hunter though sends him back to the apron. All the shoulder to the gut and, oh wait a minute, power bomb to the floor. Oh, but Alec shoves him away. He's not feeling the effects of that sunset for peace. They're both completely running on adrenaline right now. The neck breaker. Two. Alaric going for a suplex, but a Northern Light suplex by Hunter. Three. Chris Hunter, oh, he's going back in the ring. He's not trying to be on the outside right now. Oh, but he made a major mistake here. Oh, face first on the buckle. Oh, but he's back in it. Oh, the ends of Gary in the corner. And, oh, wait a minute. Tangles him up in the ropes. We've seen him do this before. Drop kicks to the chest. Now going after the non-braced knee there. Of course, don't forget we have one more matchup. It's... We're already an hour and six minutes into this show. That means we've uh, we've had a, a long a long show with the singles matches we've had previously, which is a good thing in my opinion. I like contests. I like the idea of seeing these competitors fight for every last bit of the matchup. These clotheslines, I think, are up to nine now. As it goes for the cover, that's clearly a rope break. Dropping the knee on the chest once again and just driving it multiple times in. Lifts him up. Fireman carry for the wasteland and the senton combo. On our dragon screw leg lifts him down. Top mount and the, the fists are flying once again and a stop to the gut for good measures. Oh, there's three more moonsault. Hunter turns him around. Oh, Mega Driver, no block. Dragon, no, Bubba Bomb. Oh, wait a minute, pin. 
One, two, three. The Bubba Bomb on the previously damaged tailbone to pick up the win here tonight. Howard finally, yes, yeah, see right there, that springboard leg drop where he miscalculated the landing. I believe that's the exact maneuver that cost him the matchup because that Bubba Bomb at the end, super, okay, super high up in the air compared to the springboard. Drops directly on the tailbone. And then he got that really tight pin on the finish there. However, we got our main event next up. The Trios Championship Tournament first round match number three. As Joe Blade, Mamba, and Jonathan Ray take on Exiled. It's going to take forever. I already know it. But I turned those things on fast because I know it's going to be a long one. Oh, wait a minute. I was looking for Jonathan Ray as Ray because that's how his name is on the matches. Okay, here we go. Trio's match in the main event. I chose the wrong attire for Stone. Pretty sure I did at least. I know it seems like I'm just shrugging off the uh, the return of Roy Pierce here, but I'm not. It's just uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in the tournament and a lot of big opportunities here. And one of the things Roy Pierce has never done in VPW is hold a tag championship of any form. However, uh, Tonight, he's just the third member of Exiled, which is a group collectively made of former clergy members, of, except for Joe Blade, who's on the opposing team. Looks like Joe Blade might be making his way to the ring separate from his team, the following though. following contest is a six-man tag team match. Introducing first... From Long Island, New York, weighing in at 306 pounds, Joe Blade. Interesting that this uh, this trio, Joe Blade, Jonathan Ray, and Mamba, though they've had one six-man tag match before, which was at Wrestle Wars where they defeated the clergy, surprises me that they're not coming out all together. They're coming out separate. Could just be Joe taking the lead and the other two making their entrance together, but I'm not sure. And at a combined weight no, that's exactly of what it was. Pounds. Mamba and Ray, of course, came up short 
in the final match of the Tag Team Championship No More Contender Tournament. Losing to the Prestige in the final match of the tournament. But of course, like I said, Joe Blade, one of the former members of clergy, but these three are also former members of clergy. And of course, Stone and Brandon here, two of the first three pounds. additional members of clergy. Of course, starting with Jacob Wells and adding Stone, Brandon, Dustin Weaver, and Joe Blade, and then eventually Roy Pierce was added to the group. And then, of course, later on with VPW, you have Hunter Quinn, Christian Blake, and Amber Reed. Amber Reed being the second ever member of, well, the second ever female, female clergy member just behind a very brief alliance with Louise Bates back in 2019. Rio's action. These two have so much history. Joe Blade has, in his entire career, never had someone who has challenged him more in VPW than this man. It's a, he's currently doing a suplex to. Brandon Alexander fought Joe Blade at VPW Homecoming. Fought him at Kingdom 3. He's fought him numerous times before and after both of those appearances for the World Championship, the Intercontinental Championship also. Joe Blade has always been and possibly could always be, judging by the way this match could be, could be the one thing that stops Brandon Alexander from success in VPW. He's always been that brick wall for Brandon Alexander. Brandon though drops behind, gets that body blow, springboard. That's the only way he's going to be able to do anything to Joe here is to use that quickness. And Joe's just tossing Brandon away, not able to get a single grapple on the big man here. It's Joe manhandling former, I think, three or four time tag champ, Brandon Alexander. As Brandon tags to the returning Roy Pierce. Former multiple, I think former three-time world champion, former two-time intercontinental champion, or it could be a two and three reversed. I don't know. Roy Pierce, a one-time VPW Rumble winner as well. And I don't think these two have encountered each other ever. Mamba has. Uh, had come into VPW long after Roy Pierce had taken his leave of absence. And uh, of course, I was uh, I'm informed that Justice Stone and Roy Pierce elsewhere have held championships together. But they've also had their history in VPW as Roy Pierce lost his first ever Intercontinental Championship, or second, sorry, his second Intercontinental Championship reign was taken away from him by the man he's currently teaming with, Justice Stone. Justice Stone defeating him in an Iron Man submission only matchup at Redemption UK 2019. Of course, that matchup doesn't exist on any sort of media because Mixer screwed us over. Chop to the chest, sends him into the rope there. Roy, though, sent to the floor. 
Lamba goes for that strike, but gets caught with a body block. And now the gut wrench suplex, no reversal. German suplex on the floor. And I don't know about you, but I saw his shoulder. And by his shoulder, I mean specific. Oh my God. Joe Blade bodying Brandon Alexander for no reason, really, on the outside there. Oh! Mamba just struck Justice Stone in the face. Cradle, pile driver. Everyone's doing that move now. Now one, two, and a rope break. Well, one and a rope break. Oh, Stone catches Joe with that backbreaker, and he's. I think we're finally seeing someone tired of Joe Blade in this matchup and gritting the match of the man for now, but a kick to the head by, by Mamba on Stone. And now Jonathan gets in the ring just long enough for Roy Pierce to hit the suplex. Follows up, back suplex as well. Tag to Brandon. Who's a... Uh, Gets the fireman carry. Oh, he's got it. Oh, the GTS. Tag to Pierce. Gonna let him get the pin. Oh, wait a minute. What is what is Roy Pierce doing? Not very, not a very high-risk maneuver kind of guy, but he goes for that elbow drop and misses. Just wasted the opportunity of that GTS there. Oh my, oh my god! No! Oh my god to the floor! Mamba landing hip first on the floor there. But I guess he's still okay as he gets that shooting star. But Mamba just sets his sights on stone here. Oh, the Death Valley driver, but Roy Pierce using the distraction to his advantage. Misses, gets the boot to the leg. Oh, and the shoulder right into the post is Mamba going after Stone once again. He sets his sights on the wrong person, not focusing properly in this matchup. His focuses are way out of line in this matchup. He's setting back on Stone here. Pierce is going to let it happen so that he can get the upper hand on Mamba and let Brandon... Oh, wait a minute. All, all three members of Exile on the outside here. The famous are on the floor. That Katara Crusher famous are on the floor. Now, all Brandon misses the knee strike. No matter which, ver which team wins here, it's going to be... Uh, an interesting aspect, in my opinion, depending on who wins the next matchup in the tournament. Is Mamba in the ring, and unfortunately for Brandon, Joe Blades, the man that got tagged in, and the spear! One, and still once again able to break up the hold, and double stomps on Jonathan Ray. Stone and Jonathan Ray have history in this match as well. Again, there's not a single aspect of this match I, that doesn't have some sort of history to it. I mean, Mamba was the golden boy of Joe... Well, it's still the golden boy of Joe Blade, to be honest. Joe Blade failed to mention earlier that he is the general manager of the show we are currently watching. This is the first time as active general manager he's been booked on the show. But we can't forget to mention that Joe Blade, golden, his golden boy was Mamba. For a decent chunk of time, Mamba had to take some time after being attacked by the clergy, of course. And that powerbomb lands. Now the cover, this could be it for Brandon Alexander here as Roy Pierce getting in and breaks the count. And the referee's been taken out here. Oh, Brandon with the DDT on Blade. 
Finally able to get some offense in on the big man as he takes that. Yeah, heads it is. Now Stone getting tagged in, I believe, for the first time. Of course, Justice Stone lost his ever his first ever world championship. His one and only BP double. No, sorry. He lost his second ever world championship, just like Roy Pierce, to this man. He didn't lose uh, the world championship to Roy well, to Joe Blade, but anyways. Or did he? I don't know. I think he lost to Amber. Anyways, Justice Stone. Took the, well, took the world championship off of J Jacob Wells and lost it to Joe Blade after Joe won the King of the World Tournament in 2019. Now Stone facing off with Jonathan Ray, who's in the match for the first time officially. And I don't know much about the history between these two, but I'm almost certain that they have some history. As he's going to hit that. Laymore! That boot to the face. And now that knee the arm. Going for the cover. One, two, almost a three count. Ray able to get out of the way and the tag made to Roy Pierce here. Oh, misses that, that spinning heel kick, gets caught. Backdrop driver. Ray, though, gets the upper hand. He's going to look to bring him to the enemy corner here for possibly... A, oh, my God. Boy, he's, uh, boy, he's busted open. Oh, the kick to the inner leg there. Oh, and straight to the face. Boy, he's busted open. He's getting kicked around and... Oh, misses that kick. Oh, the European uppercut misses, too. Boot to the chin. Of Pierce and Blade tags in. In the history. Oh, wait a minute. Attitude adjustment. Center of the ring on Joe Blade. One, two, no. That move has won him world championship matches. So I'm surprised it didn't get the job done here. Is now. Wait a minute. Oh, Death Valley bomb. Tag Stone back in, Brandon. Not, obviously not the best choice for a man of that size. Hello, hello. Stone gets a hold. Half and half suplex there. Lifts him back up. Turns him around. Waist lock. Oh, the punch to the back of the head and the pump handle. Oh, the backbreaker. I was not expecting that, but the boot to the face. Uh, there are characters on my show that I have created, but the vast majority are other players who made their own characters to put on the show. Good to the gut by Stone, and another one as the Death Rider, center of the ring, sort of. One, this is Xbox Series S slash X. Stone getting rid of Mamba here, no. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the face buster. Oh, and it could be the end of days for Mamba, Blade, and Ray. No, the forearm to the face of Stone. Blade sent him into the corner. Oh, my. I know what we're about to see, and I'm not, I'm not sure we're ready for it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Joe Blade. Pulling Stone up to the top. Oh, the power bump, the awesome bump. By, by Blade. One, two, no. Oh, and he's not done. Oh, wait a minute. Stone blocks it. And speaking of power bump, one by Stone as well. Oh, Ray gets the tag just barely there. Dodges the kick. Oh, the bro kick. Oh, wait a minute. Stone went after. Stone got caught by Blade there. If Stone hasn't been the distraction for the match. He's been distracted by people in the matchup. 
As that Anaconda device being locked in on Justice Stone, someone needs to get in there and break it. It, it's broken. It was broken twice, but the referee didn't call it. Wait, what a, one, two, no. Kick, foot over, DDT on Jonathan Ray. When well, he's back up. Well, this German suplexes him down, and if he gets back up, Stone's just gonna knock him back down again. And this time, the backdrop driver just tosses him around the ring, tries to the stop. Ray reverses, gets, oh, almost gets caught with that forearm. And the forearm catches that one, due to the gut. Oh, the knee to the face. Half Nelson suplex, like I said, just dropping him on his head, throwing him around the ring here. Stone lifts him up. And of days, and he's busted open. One, two, no. Mamba able to break it, but Stone looking to get rid of Mamba, and Mamba on the rope. Well, planted on the rope there. The double stop on Mamba. Tags to Brandon here. His Stone's a little trapped here in the ring as he's stuck between two of the enemy players here. Ducks under that kick. Four of the referee forced to uh, forced to just uh, let the match happen at this point. Jonathan Ray gets caught around the world here. The head scissors takedown. Brandon, I think, wants to go for a cover after that head scissors, but a little too much time taken on the pin. One, two, ooh, almost a three still. Springboard, Moonsault misses, Jonathan Ray goes for him. Grabs the head, pulls him to the corner here. Oh, and another face first into the buckle and causing a cut on the face of Brandon Alexander. Three of the men in this match busted open. Of course, two of them had to be the guys wearing headbands. Oh, the, oh, we've seen these combinations. We've seen how effective they are with Jonathan Ray. They always set up. He's going to go for this, possibly the V-trigger right here. Yes. Oh, that knee to the face. Usually sets right into the Anaconda Vice, but this time, Schoolboy into Geary. Oh, he's pulling him away from the ropes. I know exactly what he's doing. He's setting him in place for that Anaconda Vice. Or the cover. One and the breakup by Pierce once again. And Pierce going after Mamba, sending him out of the ring. Oh, the Anaconda Vice is locked in. Justice Stone. Oh, he kicked the ref in the head. Stone, it's not broken yet. Get it. fed up with being the distraction. He just formed him in the face. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the pop-up knee. Oh, the, the kick to the head. On the outside, the regal plex on Amamba. Stone's back in the ring. Oh, ducks under. Formed in the face, and the punch block. Oh, wait a minute, T-Bone into the stairs. Ends it, Gary to Stone. Oh my god, this is going. It's going, is Stone now into the buckle this time. And now a tag move. Assisted cross body from Joe Blade. And that's a lot of weight to hit you at that kind of speed. Environment carried by Joe Blade as he's taken to the corner and trying to possibly bust him open too. Oh, the alley -oop. Oh, look at the side of the head. What is Mamba doing over there? What the Mamba do? Stone reverses and he's out of here. He's tagging Roy back in. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the, oh, my, oh my God! German suplexed him straight into the bottom buckle. Jesus, his head collided with the turnbuckle. Roy Pierce lifts up Blade. No elbows to the stomach by Joe. 
German suplex, a return, but Roy's straight back up and Mamba tagged in. These two just had a war outside on their own. Mamba springboard. Oh, the cutter. I'm not late. This match has just been going a very long time. He double drops and now the headlock headstand. I start. I started this stream at 10 o'clock like I usually would for uh, Thursday night streams or Friday night streams. I mean, double to the gut by. Roy, who gets the grapple on Blade. Another German suplex. Again, three of the men in this match busted wide open from two of them being smashed into that left turnbuckle up there. Of course, one because of an end of days by Stone, and now the gut wrench suplexes him. Roy. It's the grapple, and he's trying to, he's doing something. Tried to bring him to the corner, but he got a little messed up by the referee who likes to walk in the way, I guess. And now, Blade, vertical suplex, stalling to let the blood rush to the head when you got a cut on your head like Roy does. That blood's got to go somewhere, and it's going to leave his head once it rushes there. Is now Pierce. Tags in, Brandon. Oh, Brandon Alexander. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Brandon Alexander with the Verna Breaker. Three. Wait a minute. I thought we were about to get a, a DQ there. Verna Breaker on Blade. Cover. One. And the breakup at one because both Stone and Pierce. Could not get in the ring in time. Is now Roy, well, Ray set to the floor by Brandon. And Roy needs to get out of the ring once again. Oh, wait a minute. Brandon to the top. Shooting star press on Blade. Lifts up. The opponent bringing him to the corner. Oh, and now Joe Blade busted open by the buckle just like, just like. Roy and Brandon were earlier, but a different quarter now. Blade tags in Mamba. Double Irish flip and Jonathan Ray getting out of the ring. Oh, pop-up power slam. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. One, two, no. Stone set to the floor, Roy Pierce. On the apron still. Seems like uh, now would be the time to try to end this matchup. Everyone on the other team is distracted. Vertical suplex on the outside, the stalling suplex again, but this time to, to Stone. On the inside, I don't know what's happening because the camera focused on those two. Oh, seems like Brandon might have the upper hand in this matchup. It's just these two. Brandon taking advantage of the distractions on all parts. The Tequila Sunrise on Mamba. Look at the angle on the back. It's gonna, if he gets the hold cinched in any deeper, it could be over for Mamba. No, he's able to break out of it, or release it at least. To the top rope once again. Calling for his opponent to stand up. Brandon, oh, the Savat kick. to the top. Pierce from the top, cross body, but Mamba catches. And the slam lifts him up. Going to the corner. Oh, wait a minute, distractions. Misdirection by Pierce there, causing him not to be able to get to that corner, and now Roy Pierce taking advantage, butterfly suplexes him towards the other side of the ring. 
Tags Brandon Alexander back in. Oh, and here we see it. This could be it if he's able to get to the cover. And if the other two teammates are able to stop the pin, this could be it. The Verna Breaker. Brandon covers Mamba. One. And of course, the breakup at one. No one's there to stop it. Not one person there to stop the breakup. Send him to the apron, and now the arm bar on the inside. Or send him to the floor, I mean. Stone now gets tagged in. As Roy focuses in on Joe Blade on the floor, Jonathan Ray coming over to see what's going on. And while that's happening, Stone and Brandon are focused on the matchup. And Jonathan Ray realized what was happening. He's getting back into the corner there. Maybe. Mamba's isolated here. Stone now goes for the suplex. Mamba with a knee to the head. Up on the shoulder. And the stun gun on the ropes. Oh, wait a minute. Mamba, the bitter end to Stone. One, two, no. Mamba brings Stone into the other side. Tags in Joe Blade. And another assisted crossbody using Joe as the weapon. Well, that was a shoulder block this time. Blade, look at the strikes. Turns him around, inverted DDT. Blade, sets up, stop, nope. Oh, just a kick to the face. Oh, he's gonna do it again. Now, stomping on the hand. Tags Mamba back in. He hit that bitter end earlier. He could, oh, Joe's a little tangled there. There we go. Oh, and he's going to hit it again all the way across the ring this time. Lance him down. The only two members of this match not busted open at this point. One, two, three. As none of the exiled members came in to save Justice Stone on that pin. Roy Pierce and Brandon Alexander stood ringside without doing a single thing about that final pin there. Here are your winners. However, this team of Joe Blade, Mamba, and Jonathan Ray, 2-0. and oh. They got the win here in this third match of the tournament. But on top of that, they have their one win at Wrestle Wars. But I want to thank you all for watching Future Foundation tonight. And you need to tune in tomorrow to see the final match of the first round. Because next week is the final two matches before the pay-per-view. The winners of the next two matches after tomorrow. The, the next round, the, the, final like the final two teams of the tournament will face off at Loomis and a ladder match for the trios championships but again thank you for watching tonight i hope to see you tomorrow for legacy we'll see clergy take on the scumbags we already saw jacob wells win against chase hawkins that could be a sight we're going to get used to seeing tomorrow however i want to thank our partners joshi star wrestling battlefront industry lgf and wpw check them all out and i want to thank you again for watching thank you good night